Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike. I am the American Analyst, and tonight we're going to be looking at an opinion piece from the Washington Post, Higher Education's Mandatory Political Participation. Now, this is a bit of a misleading title because it's not actually about that. It's actually about the requirements that the University of California at Berkeley are making their future professors go through. If you like what I do, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, follow me on Twitter and Minds. Let's get into it. Okay, so, firstly, there is a major problem going on right now in American college university colleges and universities and that would be the mandatory diversity requirements that many of these schools are setting up it's it's truly it's truly orwellian it's like a microcosm of socialism and the the, the thing is let me just explain to you what's going on with Berkeley. So they have new hiring practices there. And what they're doing basically is the first criteria for becoming a professor at one of America's most prestigious universities is your contribution to social justice. Now, you may be asking yourself, what is social justice? Well, social justice is an ideology which, in their words, I would say, promotes equity amongst individuals. Um, notice I did not say equality, I said equity. So their main goal, at the end of the day, I think the ideal state would be to have all university professors you would have 50% exactly men, probably less, but 50% men, and then say 25% white people, 25% black people, 25% Hispanic, and 25% other. I would say that's their end goal. And on first glance, without deeper inspection, you might think, that sounds like a pretty good idea. But if you think about it, that is the farthest possible thing from a meritocracy. The fact of the matter is that there are currently 70% white people in this country. Now, I'm not one of these crazy, you know, alt-right types who thinks that, you know, let's have all white universities. That's insane, obviously. But if you're trying to have a meritocracy, but you're also trying to limit a particular demographic because of an outside characteristic of which they have no control, you're not going to have a meritocracy. You're going to end up cutting people loose who deserve a job and promoting those who do not. Anybody who works in corporate America right now, I can tell you, I know for a fact you've all had to do some kind of mandatory diversity training. Because I have. I have 100% had to do it. It's not the worst thing in the world. But that's the point. How do you boil a frog? The answer is slowly. So, and it would seem that Berkeley has advanced to a new stage. The, from the article. First, yes, first, they were evaluated solely on contributions to diversity, equity, and inclusion. One would think that the first candidate, the first requirement for people in order to get a job teaching students at a university would be their ability to teach students rather than their contributions to diversity, equity, and inclusion. This involved assessing candidates among much else. Comfort in talking about those matters, only 214 candidates who scored well in the diversity enthusiasm sweep stakes were then evaluated as scholars. The second test concerned demonstrating, quote, a track record in advancing DEI. DEI is the 
diversity and inclusion diversity equity and inclusion initiative that they are doing that is the name of berkeley's new hiring practice the third test required plans for advancing dei so <laughs> your first three <laughs> out of five requirements all have to do with diversity equity and inclusion all three this is amazing to me uh, there was a podcast about a year ago on the Joe Rogan show uh, with Peter Bogosian and James Lindsay in which they wrote various articles concerning these types of social justice topics which were all fictitious but they wrote them in a matter that would make sense and it's honestly hilarious it really is hilarious the types of papers that were published one of them was fat bodybuilding is bodybuilding so the paper again they were being fictitious but these were published in serious journals the paper was concerning that you have these bodybuilder competitions there should be a category for fat bodybuilding in that all you do is just eat yourself into oblivion and then take off your shirt and walk on stage so it, it's just it's just amazing and the types of non-scholarly pursuits which are being advanced in america's university and berkeley is leading the way when thompson published in the leading mathematics journal her criticism of mandatory dei professions of loyalty i should have mentioned the first thing you have to do before you're even considered is write a, an oath of fealty to the gods of diversity, equity, and inclusion at UC Berkeley. A Williams College mathematician, Chad M. Topaz, was enraged by this diversity of thought. He urged a digital mob to inflict Thompson some good old public shame. He, pro he profits from diversity industry in exchange for, in exchange for donations. He and his associates will critique and even help write ghost candidates' diversity statements. So now you have a micro-economy of professors writing their diversity statements for other candidates so that they will be approved. Now, I have some serious criticisms for this person who is profiting from this intellectual dishonesty. But I also have some serious criticisms for anyone who would actually pay for this. So you don't have the courage of your convictions to write it, but you also don't have the courage of your convictions to say, no, I'm not going to do that. This is one of the biggest problems with people opposing this ideology, is that you sit back and you just say, okay, fine, fine. You want me to, it's not that bad. It's one paragraph. I don't even really mean it. I'll just write it. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Have the courage of your convictions. Stand up and say, I'm not going to write this because I don't believe in it. I think that the first consideration should be academic quality in American universities. And on that same note, it's on a similar note. I once saw an interview with the actor uh, Nick Offerman. For those of you who don't know, Nick Offerman played the part of Ron Swanson on a popular TV show. Uh, a very much a man's man, his character. Uh, and he goes on this on the show. And the interviewer, it was, it was actually on Conan O'Brien's uh, late night show. Conan asks him, what is a man? What does it take to be a man? And he starts spouting off all the things that you would expect his character to say. You know, like, go outside, chop down a tree, light the firewood, go go into the forest, hunt your dinner, bring it back, skin it, cook it, and then mount its head on your wall. Something like that. And the audience all laughs because it's a comedy show. But then when the, when the laughter dies down, he just looks at Conan and he, and he says, A man is just someone who stands up for his convictions. And I've thought about that a lot. I think it's 100% true. I don't care what you believe. But I, one of the most important things, I definitely wouldn't say it's the only thing, but one of the most important things about what it means to be a man 
is that you stand up for the cur- you have courage in your convictions. You're willing to plant your feet firmly and, and tell the rest of the world no. Like no, I'm sorry, I'm not writing this article. I'll go find a job somewhere else. I don't care. I don't care. So I have a lot of criticism for people who would have this ghost written for them. Finally, diversity enforcers whose profession is to banish the classical liberal principle that everyone should be treated as a unique individual. And because that's what this is. That's all this is. It's it's saying, like, we're not going to treat you as an individual. We're going to assign a point value to your commitment to diversity. And then we're going to use that to decide if we're going to hire you. This banishment is a political project, and DEI statements are political tests. They violate UC's stated policy prohibiting political tests when when their policy actually means only progressive political tests shall be considered. Um, well, I think that's true. This, uh, this article is certainly uh, written from the perspective of someone who has the same view as me. It's certainly a biased article, um, but that's definitely true. You're not going to see any... Uh, conservative freedom leaning classical liberal would perhaps be a better word you're not going to see any liberal tests saying that do you believe in freedom well yes I do no it's not the test is do you believe in diversity I'll leave it there if you like what I do please be sure to subscribe to my channel like this video follow me on twitter and minds have a good evening thank you all for listening This is Mike, the American Analyst. Follow me on Twitter, Mize, and subscribe to me on YouTube. And be sure to hit that bell notification. I'll be coming out with new videos every single day for your viewing enjoyment. Have a good one.